Hey folks, Nox at IT Inspired here. We are continuing the sequel journey and we are probably going to tackle what is the biggest topic there is to tackle, especially if you're going into development and or report writing, but still incredibly important uh, for the DBAs to know. And that is primary and foreign keys and how they relate to the join commands. So buckle up, we're in for a big one, let's get started. Okay, do you remember in that very first video where we were talking about what a database actually is and how it's relational and how we, we use this Excel file here uh, and kind of chopped up the data across multiple sheets? Well, one of the things that makes that secret sauce work in databases is that every single row is unique. Um, that is incredibly important to make a relational database work. Every single record in the entire database must be unique. Um, the way that that happens is they introduce typically these ID columns. And the ID columns are automatically filled when data is written to a record. Uh, and typically it starts out with one and it automatically increments to two, then three, then four, and so on. And this column where the ID is automatically filled in is called the primary key. And that is the one thing for sure that is gonna keep these records unique. For instance, if I were to type in the shape of water again, the database would automatically write this as two. So when these two columns are combined together, you've got a one and then the shape of water and then a two and then the shape of water, this row is unique because these numbers will never overlap. It will automatically just increment one at a time, at a time, at a time, at a time. And where this number is written, again, this ID field is where it actually takes place, it's called the primary key. So when we went to another sheet and we had the, the director field here and we were referencing this ID, this ID of one was referring back to this row, right? That's what we were talking about. When this ID is referring to a primary key in a different table, or in this case, a different Excel sheet, this is now called a foreign key. So we've got um, you know what, if I just go ahead and do this, let's, let's make this a little bit cleaner. How about that? We'll call this Ladybird. Um, and I don't even know who the director of Ladybird was. I, I should know that because it's, it's a very popular movie right now. Uh, so I'm just going to make up something that I, I know is absolutely incorrect. We're just going to put James Cameron in there. Uh, maybe there were a lot of explosions in Lady Bird or something. I don't know. Um, so let's put 2017. Okay. So in this case, the primary key, because this was the table that was written to first, uh, the primary key of two was created. And these following tables where two was, was referenced, uh, this is referencing back to that primary key. These on sheets two and three would be called the foreign keys. Okay. All right. That is a huge, huge topic. If you didn't get it, uh, dive into it a little bit deeper. Do plenty of research. Um, there is a lot of information out there on how keys work. Uh, but that is, is super important to understand that how a primary key is different from a foreign key um, and, and how they're used in the database world. Hopefully this very, very simple explanation uh, explains um, what was going on with keys. Okay, that is incredibly important. As you can tell, when we want to combine two sheets together, or in this case, uh, in SQL, there's two tables. For instance, let me just bring up, pick on person, person here. Um, if I, you know, pick out something that I think is interesting, uh, and I know one of these people are a customer, um, you know, I've got this query here. I could come down and I could look at sales.customer. Um, where is that table? Right, I thought I just saw it. Right there, there we go. Sales.customer, and there is this person ID column. And, you know, oh, look, I can say, oh, well, there's 7251. Well, what person is that? And I'd have to go back to uh, this table here and go all the way down and find So You don't want to do this, right? That's, this is too much manual work. When we can write a query that will return to us exactly what we're looking for by combining the tables together. 
That's called a join. And in SQL, there are several different kinds of joins. So for us to really get the hang of it, guess what? We're going back to Microsoft Paint. Oh, no. Here we go. So the way SQL does things is with a direction. And we're going to use little text here. This is going to be left and this is going to be the right side, right? This is pretty straightforward. We, we understand that this is the circle on the left and the circle on the right. So what happens when we do a join? There are three different types of join. There's a left join, an inner join, and a right join. So when we write our query, we're going to write it as a column on the left-hand side, maybe person.person, .person, equals sales.customer. It's going to be written, let me stretch this out a little bit so we can clearly see which one's on the left and which one's on the right. Okay, um, depending on the type of join that we do determines what data we're going to get back. So for instance, if I went with the most common of joins, which is the inner join, it would only return to me records where there was an exact match on the fields that I specified. So in this case, the Venn diagram uh, would look something, let me grab this, it would look something like that. It would return to me only these items where there was an exact match. Um, so if there wasn't a match uh, on the left-hand side in the, in the person not person table, or if there wasn't a match, so maybe a record uh, did exist in the, on the, in the person dot person table, but it didn't exist in the sales.customer table, that record wouldn't be returned to me. Or maybe a record exists in the sales.customer table that didn't exist in the person dot person table. For instance, uh, if you remember, when we were looking at sales.customer here, there were a whole lot of nulls at the very top. Um, these records wouldn't be returned because there's obviously not going to be a corresponding person dot person. So that's what the inner join would do. It would say, only give me the records where there is a match. Okay? The left-hand join would return to me every single record in the left-hand table and all of the records from the right-hand table where there was a match. So where the overlap takes place, that's returned as well as everything on the left-hand side. Okay, and you can kind of guess what the right hand, the right join is too, right? That is going to be all of the records on the right hand side. So in this case, all of the records in sales.customer and all of the tables from person.person .person where there was an overlap. Or, okay, so I know we're, we're, we're talking about a lot here and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense in practice. So let's get going. All right, I'm going to keep picking on those two. Um, those two tables that we've just been talking about, person.person .person and sales.customer. So let's go ahead and just do select business entity ID. You know, in fact, just so you can get a lay of the land real quick, let's do select star from person.person. .person. All right, so guess what? Take a look at this column. Do you know what that is? You can tell by the way it's incrementing, right? This is your primary key. The business entity ID is the primary key for all of these persons. And let's take a look at the sales.customer table. Look, there's a customer ID. And then there's a person ID. And then there's a store ID as well. So guess which one the foreign key is? I know your hunch goes to customer ID first, probably, but these are null. And this is going to be a customer ID that's defined as which, this is a unique number for each customer, whether it's a person or it's a store, uh, because businesses can buy things too, right? Um, so in this case, the person ID is the foreign key that is referencing the business entity ID primary key field. And I know that sounds crazy. There's even a quicker way to look at this. If we expand the table, we can expand the key. And I'm going to pick on the person ID right here. Let's go to modify. And it brings up this little foreign key relationships. Uh, if you expand this section right here, tables and columns specification, it will actually tell you um, the, the exactly where this is coming from. So the customer sales table, 
uh, has a column called person ID that is relating to the person person table and that column that it's relating to is the business entity ID. So that actually proves uh, what we were talking about. So we know now that the business entity ID is the primary key in this table and the person ID is the foreign key that relates to that business entity ID. That's what we're going to choose as our join criteria. That's what it's going to choose to make this decision on matching. So let's get started writing out this, this big query. It's not actually not going to be that big, but let's get started writing it, okay? So let's say select, I'm going to do business entity ID, first name, last name, from person.person. .person. So that's going to be clean and it's going to accept it. But now this is where it's going to get tricky, guys. We're going to have to clean this up a lot in order to do the join. So what I'm going to do to make this easier to write is I'm going to rename person.person .person just in this query. So let me do an enter here so we can clean this up. And I'm going to do this just to make sure the, cl the query is clean and easier for you guys to follow. So I'm going to rename this person.person .person, uh, table like we were just talking about by using as p, just p. So from now on, whenever I need to reference person.person, .person, I'm just going to use the letter p. And now, because we're going to be adding a second table into the mix, we now have to specify which table these columns come from. You'll, this will make more sense in a second, but right now we have to do P dot business entity ID. P dot first name and P dot last name. So we've, we've taken these columns from person dot person. We've renamed person dot person temporarily just in this query to P and then we've gone back to these columns and made sure SQL knows to pull these columns from the P table because what we're about to do is we're about to join a table to it uh, so that we can see um, who our customers are. So to do the inner join, there's two ways we can do it. Let's start with the inner join because that's the most common. You can type in inner join or just join. Join defaults to inner join. So once we've told it we're going to be joining a table to it, we now have to specify which table, sales.customer. Guess what we're going to do here? As S. And now we have to specify which, which column is going to be used for evaluating those joins. That's going to be the command of on the left the left column or excuse me the left table is going to be p and we're going to be joining on business entity id equals s person id all right there's a lot to unwrap here right <laughs> so we've done an inner join we've told it to join to we've got this query here we told it using this query I want you to join sales.customer, but please rename it to S, on the person business entity ID column equals the sales.customer person ID column. This is going to go through this Venn diagram here. Excuse me, let's clean that up a little bit. And it's going to return to us where those match because this is an inner join. And because uh, this is just looking for person, person IDs in the customer table uh, rather than maybe the HR table um, or the production table or something, uh, we know that this is just going to return to us the names of customers. Now, if I want to pull out some data from the sales table too, the sales.customer table, I can do a comma, S period, and it'll tell me, you know, these, this is interesting. Let's do, uh, how about account number? That sounds interesting. And if I execute this query, look at that. I now have these three columns that came from the person.person. .person, 
and this column that came from sales.customer. And because this was an inner join, uh, this only returned to me data where there was a match. Um, and you also might be, you might notice that uh, some names appear more than once here. That's because customers can buy more than once, right? That's why there was actually the other um, ID field. Let's try customer ID. And you know what? We can even maybe order this. order by sales.customer ID. And now they are sorted and you can see which ones are unique, which pretty much all of them because it's the primary key, right? <laughs> okay. That's a pretty big deal. There's a lot going on here. You can take it a step further. You can even inject a where clause in here. Maybe you want to say where... I don't know. Um, last names begin with W. We keep picking on people whose last names begin with W. You can do that. And it'll return, look, only 989 rows. So now we know all of the customers whose names begin with W. Pretty neat, right? Let's now return a left join. So what is this going to do? This is going to, because the business entity ID, this person, person table is on the left-hand side of this equation, that's going to return to me every single column out of the person dot person table, uh, as well as um, these columns that we add here, customer ID and account number, where there's a match. Where there's not a match, it's just going to be null. Uh, but we do have the where clause here, so it's only going to be for people whose last names are W, and it's going to be sorted by the customer ID. You know what? We're going to have to get rid of that uh, because some of these customer IDs are going to be null. Let's do execute. See? Check that out. So, it did return to us a bunch of customers here, but at the very bottom, look at those nulls. These are the people who aren't customers, but we still have records. Uh, so they're probably somewhere in HR, right? Okay. Um, this is joins. This is primary keys and foreign keys. We've unwrapped a lot. This is uh, possibly the most important SQL video we've done yet. And if you're going into development and report writing, this is the most important SQL video for you. Get to know this information inside and out. Um, get out there, practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it. Okay? Yep. You know what to do. Get out there and try it out.